Okay, I wanted to make myself some like third hands for welding to hold pieces so you don't, you know, you don't have a hand free. Uh, this kind of thing is called a third hand. You just, whatever, you just you set it on something and it'll kind of hold it there. But it doesn't hold it that hard. Um, it doesn't grip it that well. Uh, and I do stick welding and the stick welding to be yanking on stuff so it's really got to hold it pretty good so I decided to make these I saw someone online did something similar um, and basically I created these joints that allow you to turn the EMT I'll show you how it works okay so I wanted to have some clamps that I could just hold pieces of metal at an arbitrary angle or whatever and then weld them. So the electricity can travel through all of this because it's metal. Um, you can turn each part and then tighten it down with the thumb screw. You know, you could, if you want to just kind of weld these pieces of metal, for instance, at some weird angle, you could just do that. And the way the bases on these things are, there's flat pieces of metal with tubing sticking up. And so any heavy weight that has a hole in it, hole in it, you can just set it down on there. And it uh, gives you, you know, many, many options. Uh, you position stuff by turning these thumb screws to get it where you want it. And then it has a C-clamp on the business end here, just to grab stuff. It's all metal, so your ground can theoretically transfer right through it. So I'm going to make a couple third hands for welding. Um, each joint is going to be made out of... Um, some three-quarter inch iron pipe. I'm gonna make some thumb screws out of some three-eighths fine thread, all thread. Uh, well, that'll be the bolt part, and then the thumb part will be some half-inch by I think one-eighth flat stock. And then what goes in between each pivot point will be some half-inch EMT. And then at the end of it will be a C clamp, I think, or maybe a one of these alligator style clamps. I'm not sure. Okay, I need eight pieces of this three quarter iron pipe. I decided to go with uh, inch and a half sections. So I marked that off with a paint pen. And to make it easier to drill the hole for the three eighths all thread, um, I ground on, I ground down a flat spot on each piece, and then uh, used a punch to make a mark for the drill bit.
Drill press was having problems getting through the last bit, so I'm going to try and use a hand drill on high speed. Sometimes that'll work to get those last little nubs. But maybe not this time. There, easy as that. I'm going to use the uh, awl thread to hold the nuts in place. Warm up the uh, electrode first on the stick welder. These 14 inch abrasive chop saws, I don't like them that much, they're slow, but you know, I think I got this one at a garage sale or Craigslist for 50 bucks. And it'll give you a straight cut compared to like an angle grinder, and it's safer too when you're cutting stuff like this. There's what the eight sections of pipe with uh, welded on nuts looks like. Um, next, I gotta cut this uh, half inch flat stock into two inch sections. That will be the uh, thumb screw part of the bolts. Uh, so, while this thing isn't that good at cutting um, that thick pipe, this stuff, which is half inch by one eighth, cuts through it real good. It's kind of, that's what it's good at. I'll show you that. Okay, to clean out the inside of these pipe sections, I'm using a couple files. The triangle file kind of is aggressive to get the part you don't want off. 
and then just finish it with a round file to get the last bits. These are Harbor Freight files, they work pretty good. Except that the handle's coming off. Okay, we want to put these pipe sections uh, at 90 degree angles between each other. It's 34 degrees and my breath keeps fogging up my mask and I can't see nothing. <laughs> as many sides as you can. If two of them hold and two of them don't, you're fine. Okay, uh, it's not necessary, but I'm going to clean these off in a sulfuric acid mixture. I got this, it's like a goldfish pond insert. Anyways, fill it with water, put in um, muriatic acid, which is, actually that's hydrochloric. It's a hydrochloric acid mixture with water. And we'll just throw these in here for probably a day and see how they look. Okay, I marked off the all thread into eight sections of seven eighths long pieces. I think I'll cut these with the angle grinder so it has a smaller kerf. Okay, I'm gonna cut the all thread with a angle grinder because it has a smaller kerf and it doesn't mess it up as much as the larger chop saw. I've hurt myself with an angle grinder before and uh, the thing to remember about angle grinders is when they bind, they will fly. And they will fly in the opposite direction of the sparks. So, for instance, now, if I fly straight up at my face, but that guard would protect me. I should probably put the guard a little more like that.
left this nut on here so I can kind of fix the threads on at least one side after every cut. Uh, here's a trick someone once showed me. Um, when you're cutting all thread, a lot of times you'll end up with like a little bit of one thread left that doesn't go all the way around. So you can just take your wire strippers and uh, they're a harder steel than the all thread and you can just cut that part off. Um, you know, works on quarter inch and above pretty much. If it's too small, it doesn't work. To really do this right, I should probably clamp these pieces down, but I'm just going to see if I can get her done without doing that. I don't know. Do the other side. I'm a completely self-taught welder, if you can't tell. Okay, I took him out of the acid bath. Here's what they look like. There's ice mixed in, it's so cold out right now. Depending on how strong you make the mixture is how well it'll clean. Um, looks like my mixture's getting kind of old and weak. Uh, but still, that's probably good enough. It helps takes takes a lot of the rust out of the inside, which you can't get to otherwise. And uh, I think I'm going to dry these on my rocket stove and then uh, see if I can heat up some spray paint and heat these things up and see if I can paint them. All right, they're in a stainless steel bowl. See what happens. Okay, I got the paint up to maybe 90, 100, 100 degrees, they're pretty hot, and the metal pieces are at extremely hot, um, so I'm going to let them cool down for a second, and then I'm going to paint it.
I think I painted them good enough and uh, the metal parts are still about 80 degrees so hopefully that dries good. I put the parts back on the fire to dry. I don't know if that is good or not. Okay, I'm going to cut a couple 6 inch by 6 inch squares out of this. I think this is a door for uh, some sort of electrical cabinet. Um, code, electrical code, requires a lot of metal things to be a sixteenth of an inch thick. And so that's how thick this is. And then I was looking up sheet metal gauges the other day and it turns out that 16 gauge is a sixteenth of an inch thick. Now none of the other gauges <laughs> have something easy to remember like that but there's but, but sixteenth is a sixteenth of an inch thick. Uh, I'm going to use my Milwaukee uh, metal cutting circular saw. You got to be careful when you cut with it because if you let it bind, it'll break off the teeth and the blades ain't cheap. first. Uh, this half inch EMT electrical tubing is too thin to really weld very good. So I'm going to make myself a couple pieces to go around the base and uh, make it thicker. So hopefully I can weld it better. And I'll just use my saw set to a low depth. Flip those around the base of the tubing to make it double thick. Okay, this EMT is a little too thick, thin to be able to weld good. So I cut myself a couple uh, extra pieces to go around the part that I want to weld so it'll be like welding into two pieces of EMT. That'll work better. Okay, I'm gonna try and weld these. 12 inch long EMT pieces with the extra part around them to make them thicker to these little steel bases. see it wants to just blow holes in everything. My welder doesn't work right. I can't really choose the right settings. So. But it'll still stick two pieces of metal together. I'll show you trying to dial in the uh, number on the welder. Say you want, what I want is like 100, 110. So you turn it down, 
goes around, it floats, turn it up. Who knows what you get? It has nothing to do with the where the dial is located. You just you know, so that's zero. Touch it. Oh, that's 86. Touch it. Oh, 70, 60, 70. And it's just random. And you just it's basically like rolling the dice until you get a number that's close enough. Until you get tired of rolling the dice and you just want to take a number. 76, you know, roll the dice. You know, where's it going to stop? Who knows? It's kind of like gambling, I guess. Eventually it settles down to something, and then sometimes it'll move while you're welding, and I'm not entirely sure the number's accurate anyways. You know, if you wanted 30, you'd be set. Oh, maybe you wanted 45. <laughs> and so on. Okay, so I'm going to weld these C-clamps to a 12-inch piece of EMT. Uh, I decided I wanted it more in line with the bottom of the clamp. I think usually when you use it, you really only use like you know the first half inch or first inch. You're not putting stuff like where the center of the workpiece that you clamp to is not usually in the center of the C clamp. So, or at least in this case. I'm just doing little individual wells because otherwise I'll blow right through that EMT. Okay, that's what it looks like after I ran the wire, wire wheel on it. You heard a stack of dimes? Well, this is a stack of bird crap. <laughs> 